Hi, my name is Cheryl Simpson, and I'm a full-time faculty member here at Great Falls College. I just want to take a couple of minutes to tell you about our dual credit options in the Computer Technology Department. Before you consider dual credit, a couple of thoughts to have. Does your school actually offer any computer classes? A lot of rural schools in Montana, Class B and Class C, can't really afford or have the staff to teach computer courses to you. Those that do are lucky, so if your school is one of those, you are in a great school. The problem is they really don't have the time to teach lots of different courses, so you may have already taken all of the computer courses that your school offers. That's okay. Montana Digital Academy offers you the opportunity to take high school classes in computers even if your school doesn't offer them. However, most of those don't go directly onto your college transcript. If you're going to be taking online classes anyway, wouldn't it be great to start earning some college credit while you're still in high school? For students who live close by to either Great Falls or one of the larger cities, you might be able to drive into your local campus to be able to take college credits as dual credit. However, some people, especially in rural Montana, that might be 100, 150 miles away. You really don't want to drive that far just for one class a day. So lots of driving really isn't an option. If you do have a local college, do they actually offer courses in computers that actually interest you? Are you going to be spending more time on the road than you are in class? Another thing about the local colleges is that to offer dual credit, instructors must have an OPI license or a high school license. Your, your counselor will be able to explain this a little bit better. But our faculty here at Great Falls College, almost all of our faculty or adjunct faculty have either a class eight dual credit license or even a class 2 or 4A license. I personally have a 4A and a 2, so I can teach high school students and college students. The last part of this is whether or not you really want to go to college. College is a big decision, and people have probably been talking to you about it for years. Whether you really want to go to college really depends on what college looks like. Is it something that you will enjoy? If you wait until you graduate high school to go on to college, you might pack up all your things, move into a dorm, spend $10,000 a year on room and board, and get classes that you may not even be interested in. Is this really what you want to do your first year out of high school? If you take dual credit classes now, you'll learn what it's like to take a college course. You will be heads and tails above everybody else who has not taken a college course if you decide to go on to college. It gives you that opportunity to kind of take one class at a time rather than three or four, which can be a little bit stressful. If you do decide to go on to college, you'll already know what to expect and you'll have some great experiences along with a couple credits. This is where Great Falls College comes in. Most of our introduction computer science courses are offered entirely online. You don't have to drive anywhere. You don't ever have to come into campus if you don't want to. Our courses are eight week courses. A normal semester for fall and spring semester is going to be 16 weeks. So August to December, January to May. Our courses are eight week courses, which means that you can take two back to back courses in a single 16 week semester. Now, don't think that one course, oh my gosh, am I going to fill up my time with one course? Our courses are condensed. We've taken all of the knowledge of a 16-week semester and put it into an eight-week course, which means we expect lots of work. We expect you to put some significant time into your courses. College courses also usually have solid deadlines. So if you're the type of person that doesn't turn in work on time, this probably isn't for you. If you've ever taken a summer school course where they take an entire semester or an entire year and condense it down and you have to do work every day for two or three hours a day, that's what you're looking at for these courses. With our instructors, because they're all online courses, our instructors are available to you all the time through email or Microsoft Teams or WebEx where they might have office hours. I personally use Microsoft Teams and students can chat with me or send me texts anytime they want to. Now I may not get back to them anytime, but I will get back to them quickly. So if you text me at 10 p.m. at night, I will definitely get back to you first thing in the morning. 
If you text me during the workday, I probably will get back to you in a couple of minutes, a couple of hours at the, at the most, depending on what my situation is. So you still can interact with your instructors even though you're in an online course. We expect it. At Great Falls College, we take lots of pride in how much we want to talk to our students, how much engagement we expect from you. So we may have team meetings where you, have, you are expected to show up to a meeting once a week or so where the instructor and the other class members can all talk together. Our class sizes, you know, you may have heard about college class sizes, big, huge lecture halls, 300 students. That's not Great Falls College. Most of our classes are limited to 25 students. But since they're online anyway, you probably won't notice. Your, your classes are going to be between you and your instructor and some of the other students in your course, if that's how the course is set up. You may just talk to your instructor, and that's fine as well. So this is kind of a one-on-one -on -one situation where you get that personal attention from your instructor that you may be used to in a rural school. This video isn't for everybody, but it is for any high school students that think you might be interested in computers. You don't have to be. It's okay if you're not. If you just kind of want to branch out there and think it might be an interesting thing, you can do that. Take one course. Find out if it's interesting to you. There is also a lot of students that I've come across that really decided they wanted to go into computers because they want to play video games all day long. I'm going to tell you now, being a game designer is a whole lot different than playing video games. You really have to learn how to code, and coding is not as easy as you may think it is. Now, some of you listening to this may have lots of experience with coding. You may have done all of the, the code options that you had through your school. You may have looked up Unity online. You may have done a lot of things to teach yourself how to program. That's great. That experience is going to help you through these courses if this is where you want to go. But I'm going to tell you now that a lot of students who teach themselves how to program don't do as well as they expect because they didn't learn how to program well, because they didn't learn how to program following the rules that are expected in the industry. That's where we come in. I can teach you how to program for an industry. So if you want to go into working at Blizzard or you want to go into game design or coding or web design, there's expectations from you and you better learn what those are before you get into the industry. You may think that college by definition is too hard. It may not be, it may be, but isn't it worth it to give it a chance to try out a class and see maybe something that interests you, maybe that will grab your attention more and you'll want to do your college credits. With your college classes, you are going to have to be self-motivated. You're going to have to decide to do the work on your own without having somebody hound you. Things are a little different in college. At Great Falls College, we offer four distinct degree programs. Our degree programs are AAS, or Associate of Applied Science programs, which means they should take you about two years, as opposed to a bachelor's, which usually takes about four years. So if you want to go down to Bozeman or Missoula, and you want to get a bachelor's, that's a four-year program. Our programs are usually two years, and they're designed that way. If you have an interest in any of these programs, you can start taking the intro or first-year courses now while you're still in high school, so that as soon as you finish high school, you can finish up the degree in less than a year, depending on where you are in the status. This is just an example of how you would get to the list of degree programs we have. So going from the catalog at the top, you can see where it's circled at the top, they give you a list going down the side. You can click Academic Programs. You can see we have both the Cybersecurity CTS and AAS. The CTS is a certification. It does require some prerequisites, but it's only a one-year program. And then, of course, our Computer Programming, Information System Support, and Network S Support and Security. So these are our four programs. You can click on one of the programs and be able to reference all of the program requirements. And then each of the different courses you can click on to determine what that course is about and if there's any prerequisites. So our four programs, computer programming, this would lead you to be a programmer, web designer, designing applications. You're going to take courses for this degree in different languages, in server-side, client-side support, data structure, how to design software implementation programs. Um, this is for the guy that wants to program. 
information system support, this is the degree that's going to help you to either to work with the hardware, maintaining PCs, repairing and troubleshooting, or working on a help desk to be able to help people to get their computers to work. If you've ever had that friend that says, my computer doesn't work, and you're the guy that says, I'm going to go fix it, and you go in and you replace the memory, or you control alt delete and you deal with the task manager, this might be a direction you might want to go. So this is the information support that we want to do for IS support. Network support and security is the person who is going to go through and run cables, take care of your network, make sure that all of the computers in your network are working well. There are some fundamentals of cybersecurity in this direction because everything needs to be secure when you make a new network. So this could be your system maintenance or your network analyst. And of course, our fourth, our cybersecurity. Yes, you do some ethical hacking in this course. You learn about how systems work, how people can break in, how you can secure your network so that they can't. And of course, being an analyst or designing systems going along with that networks course um, to make sure that you can take care of com companies and help them as they go along. If any of these programs sound interesting to you, if this sounds kind of like a fun thing you might enjoy, take a class or two. See if you do enjoy it. I have a lot of students that start out in cybersecurity, then take their programming class and realize they like to program. Or they take the programming class and then realize they really want to do networks. That's fine. Take some classes, take some intro classes, and then move your way through. We're here to help you to do the best you can to figure out what you want for your degree program and how you want to focus in your future life. So these are our three Introduction to Computers courses. Usually they don't have any prerequisites. Um, the Computer Fluency is a co-requisite with 100. Um, and these courses kind of get you an introduction to computers. Our first is Computer Fluency. This is usually required for every future course. This, we want to make sure students understand the basics of computers before they move on. Computer Fluency is a three credit course that introduces you both to the practical and the theoretical of computers. We get a little bit into the history of computers. We talk about how it's used in business and in the industry. And we have you do some labs and some exams to make sure that you can get through it. This is usually recommended as your first course. If you have not taken a computer course, if you have not taken a computer course from us, this is the course you want to enroll in first. The sooner you get this one done, the sooner you can start the other courses, which are a little bit more fun. Our Intro to Programming course is a co-requisite with 105, which means you can take them both at the same time. So if you were to take two courses in the spring, you might want to take 105 first and then 100 second, so having them back to back. 100 is our Python course. We teach you how to program in Python. A lot of you may already have some experience in Python or experience in coding and thinking, I don't want to take an introduction to coding class. I'm going to tell you now, most students who come into my class like that learn so much more about how to code well, how to code better, how to document, how to comment, how to write their algorithm and understand so much more about how to program from coming through this course. This 100 course, Intro to Programming, does a lot of projects. You're going to write them on your home computer and you're going to submit them to me. So these are all project-based. There are a couple of quizzes, just because we have to do quizzes, but there's mostly projects. So you're going to be writing code all the time in this course. And you're going to be learning all the different aspects of programming, from variables to pointers to um, objects and constructors and inheritance and arrays, lots of different aspects of coding. The last one on this list is what we call our CAP 131, or our Microsoft Office course. Microsoft Office is actually a requirement for many of the other programs at Great Falls College because it's going to give you those hands-on tools of Word, Excel, PowerPoint, and Access. Most high school classes don't include Access because they don't think you're ready to handle a database. I do. So in our 131 courses, we do have you do a little bit in databases, not a lot but just enough to kind of wet your whistle and, and think about what it is you want to do if you ever need to use Access. Word, PowerPoint, and Excel, you probably have had courses in these in your high school or something like that. These will be good for you to just learn all the different little aspects of Microsoft Office 
Word, PowerPoint, and Excel. These are the three main ones that are used in the real world. So when you get out of high school, you're not going to be using Google Sheets or Google Docs a lot. The thing about 131, about CAP 131, is you have to have Office 365 installed on your machine. You cannot use a Chromebook for this. So if that's something in your school where you're doing Chromebooks, your Chromebook is not going to cut it for this, which means you either have to use a home computer or one of the Windows computers at your school and um, get Office 365. So these are the three first courses that I recommend when people are coming in. After you take these, we can do some secondary courses. This is a very short list of the secondary courses. These are usually ones that you would take your first year of two, so I have not included all of the courses. There's a lot more than this. But we teach courses in Java, programming, databases, web design, networks, so fundamentals, understanding how networks work, how cabling works, network OS, operating system, desktop, security, computer maintenance and repair, Linux, and technical writing. Technical writing is a great course because it teaches you how to write technical documents. It sounds kind of silly. I already know how to write a document. Yeah, but technical documents are different. Documentation, and if you enjoy writing and you enjoy computers, technical writing is something that is a, an amazingly important career choice if that is something you enjoy. A lot of people don't like to do documentation. They don't want to write anything down, but the guy who can actually write your technical documents that person is going to do well in the industry. All right, most importantly, college is not easy. Please don't think that this is going to be an easy course. Just because I'm coming to you and suggesting these courses does not mean it will be easy for you. Your grades from dual credit go on both your high school and your college credit or transcript, which means if you are a straight A student and you're top of your class and you take one of my courses and you get a B, that B goes on your high school transcript and you're no longer a 4.0 student. Be aware of that. It doesn't mean you shouldn't do it and you will have options to drop the course early if you don't want it on your transcript, but that's how this goes. It's both high school and college credit at the same time, which means my grades from my courses go straight onto your high school transcript and your college transcript. If you flunk my class, if you fail my class, there's an F on your, on your college transcript. I can't make it go away. It's it's there forever. That's how college transcripts work. So be aware, you are going to, if you want to take these courses, you want to put some effort into them. I generally estimate 15 hours a week. That may sound insane. 15 hours a week expects you to have at least one to two hours of class time from your school five days a week and an additional five hours of personal homework time. It's a college course. Did you think it was going to be easy? So your school can usually set up a study hall or something for you to take these to, to work on your course during class time. You should expect to work outside of school on your assignments. I've seen a lot of students in school that can do all of their schoolwork during class and never have to worry about it when they get home. That's not how college works. So plan on working outside of school on your assignments. And a big thing, your college instructors really don't care about your football game or your basketball game or your track meet, um, your volleyball game. They really don't care. Your sporting events or extracurricular activities are not f factored in to anything the instructor does. So the instructor is going to give you due dates. You're going to have to follow those around your schedule. So you're going to have to learn some time management. Most college professors do not accept late work. I personally tell my students I give them a zero. If it's not turned in on time, it's a zero. It's done. I don't accept late work. I sometimes allow some flexibility if you talk to me early. This is what's going on in my life. This is what happened. This is why it will come in a day late. And I might say, okay, I'll accept 50% because you told me early. Depends on the class, depends on the instructor. Most instructors don't accept late work. So again, if you're a late work type person, class isn't for you. And importantly, personal responsibility. Fun thing about college courses, you're an adult now. You may be 16, but you're an adult now. You are responsible for your performance in these courses. Your parents cannot interfere. Your instructors at high school cannot interfere. This is between you and the instructor at the college. So you're an adult for this purposes. And you have to understand your parents can never call the instructor to say, you know, little Johnny didn't do this or that or the other doesn't matter. The, the parents can't call us. This is between you and I. 
because it's your class. It's your college. You're an adult for this purposes. Your instructors, myself included, will allow you to fail. I will. I've failed students before. I never did it when I was a high school teacher, but I definitely did it as a college teacher. Students who do not turn in assignments, they fail. Students who don't put in the effort, they fail. It happens. Now, I don't want you to think everybody fails. Most of my students succeed. It's up to you to communicate with your instructor. If anything comes up, they may, see, they may seek you out. I sometimes do. If I notice you haven't turned in an assignment or something, I might send you a quick little text. Hey, what's up? Why didn't you turn it in? Um, but I might just let it go. I might wait for you to miss two or three assignments before I bother to call you. I'm not going to check up on you. I'm not going to bug you. If you want to fail my class, I will allow you to. If you put in the time and the effort and you try, you will know by midterm if you're going to pass my classes. At that point, you can always choose to drop the course and it will no longer end up on your transcript. You end up with what we call a W or a withdraw. It shows a W, but it doesn't show an F. It doesn't show a D. It doesn't show a C whatever it is. So you will know by midterms how you're doing in the courses and you can make decisions at that point. But don't think that just because you're taking the course, you automatically pass it. You have to put in the work and you have to put in the effort and you have to talk to your instructor. If this sounds like something for you, a couple of things to think about. Are you even eligible? So you have to be either 16 years old or a junior, which means if you are a 15 year old junior or you are a 16 year old sophomore, you can take these courses. So. Eligibility is based on age and standing in your school. Your school must have an agreement with Great Falls College. Check with your counselor. I assume that you have one because you're listening to this video, but it's possible that you don't. So make sure that you have an agreement with Great Falls College. You have to be passing all of your high school courses and actually be on track to graduate. You can't think, well, I already failed all my classes in high school. Let's go take a college course. If you are not on track to graduate, you cannot take it because it's up to the permission of your counselor and or your superintendent principal to determine if you are eligible. When you get through all of those, your parents have to agree. You're still a high school student. You need your parents' permission. So obtain signatures from your parents, your counselor, and then of course a Great Falls College admission official. The last part is proficiency or prerequisites. As I said, CSCI 105 is a prerequisite for future courses. There are also proficiency scores for future courses beyond that. The Java course requires that you get at least a um, certain ranking on either the ACCUPLACER or the ACT. By the time you're a junior, you may have already taken your ACT score. You may have taken it or you may be taking it later this year. Your ACT scores can count for proficiencies in math, writing, or science, so based on what your scores are there. If you've already taken your ACT, you can use those instead of taking the ACCUPLACER. The ACCUPLACER is a test that we can offer through our testing center where you take a test to figure out at what level are you as far as math, science, or writing. How much does it cost? Well, Montana offers a one-two free program where your first two dual credit classes are tuition free. They're not free, they're tuition free. So we cut the tuition entirely for your first dual credit classes to give you the chance to do this without a huge amount of cost. Classes after your first two, two dual credit classes or your first six credits are usually offered at a discounted rate. So talk to your counselor about how much the courses are going to cost you after your first two free ones. This is a new thing for most high school students. You're responsible for buying your books. So depending on the course, you may need to get a subscription to a program called um, Cengage or you may need to get your, your textbooks. If you get your textbooks, you can choose to get them through the library or through the bookstore on, great, on, college, on campus, or you can order and rent them from Amazon or one of the other online sources. But you are gonna need to get your book. You can talk to your school about whether your school wants to pitch in for that or buy the books for you, but you are responsible. It's not something on our side. This is gonna be something with you and your school to determine about your books. The website down here, admissions.gfcmsu slash dual enrollment, is going to be where you want to go to start looking into dual enrollment courses. So if you go to our gfcmsu.edu website, you can look at the top where it says admissions and then scroll down to see where it says um, getting credit while you're still in high school. You want to talk to your counselor. You want to talk to your parents. You want to think about what courses you want to take and why you want to take them. 
make sure you understand what you're getting yourself into. If this is something that you want to do, you're going to go and download and complete your dual enrollment checklist application, look at the AccuPlacer exams that you need to take if you need to take any, and fill out the registration packet. Then you want to contact the dual enrollment registration team. You can always email them at dual at Great Falls College MSU or at this phone number to be able to find more information about our dual credit program. Again, dual at gfcmsu.edu. The team there is going to work with you. They're going to ask you about what do you want to do? What classes do you want to take? Why do you want to take them? Are you sure this is what you want to do? If so, you're going to email them all of the things that you need to send them, so all of your applications and your signed things, and send those off. This is where things come in really close. I'm recording this in mid-December, and registration for spring semester ends January 6th of 2021. If you cannot fill out all of your registration, get all of your signatures, and turn it all in by January 6th, you can't register for spring semester. Doesn't mean you can't register in the fall. So this is where if you don't think that you can get registered for spring because you just can't and you're just not ready for spring, that's fine. Fall semester is still there. Summer semester is still there, and we can always help you through that. I appreciate you spending a few minutes with me. What I'd really like to do is to contact your counselor and come and talk to you in person over the internet if we're still doing the COVID thing. Um, if you have any questions, if there's anything I can do to explain any part of this, I would love to have a one-on-one -on -one conversation with you, with your counselor, with your school, however you would like to do this, so that we can help you to see what Great Falls College can do for you. Dual credit is not for everyone. I think I've made that pretty clear, but I want to point it out one more time. Dual credit is not for everyone, but it might be for you. Thank you so much for listening. Have a great day.